So Fort Wagner, you notice, is right there off the coast of Charleston. It is one of the forts that is defending the entrance to the main harbor of the Confederacy. That main harbor of the Confederacy would be open, blockaded, but open until almost the very end of the war. So there was constantly attempts to take the, um, the Confederate fortresses around the harbor so that the harbor could then be taken. But these were incredibly hard fortresses to take. One of them was called Fort Wagner. And in July 1863, the 54th Massachusetts, which is, um, again, it, it is perhaps the most elite black unit in the Civil War. Frederick Douglass's serve, uh, sons serve in the 54th M Massachusetts, as does Sojourner Truth's great grand or grandson, as does George de Baptiste's children. Many of the leading black figures in the North, their children will serve in the 54th Massachusetts. The 54th Massachusetts is led by radical white abolitionist officers. And early in the war, remember how we were saying that black soldiers had to do fatigue duty. They was combat was generally not uh, the purview of black troops. And uh, it was thought in lunacy, it was thought that uh, slavery had made black men docile and they would not fight. Nothing could be further from the truth, but this is what white officers generally thought. And so black people were not generally put into the field. And, uh, and so the 54th Massachusetts demands to lead what is really a suicidal assault on, the, on Fort Wagner in July 18th, 1863, to prove to white officers that black men would die, fight and die, right? So this was a blood sacrifice to say to white officers, we want to fight for our own freedom and we are, we will show you how ferociously we will fight for it. We will have this suicidal charge onto Fort Wagner. And that's what happened. It wasn't just black troops who were engaged in that suicidal charge, but it was black troops who led that suicidal charge. Uh, and if anybody has seen the movie Glory, um, you've seen a cinematic representation of that of that charge. It is one of the most, no, it is the most iconic moment for black, uh, for all of uh, black participation in the Civil War. This um, the painting that you're seeing there actually hung for the rest of his life over Frederick Douglass's desk, right? So that's how important this moment was in the Civil War. About half of the 54th Massachusetts who went up uh, to attack uh, Fort Wagner were killed, wounded, or missing. You can imagine what it was like for a black soldier to be captured by the Confederates. A number were captured by the Confederates at Fort Wagner, a number were sold back into slavery, some were executed on the spot, and others were sent to Andersonville prison to die. Uh, being captured uh, uh, by the Confederates was a death sentence, right? It was no quarter given for Black people, often, often. And frankly, for Black soldiers, there was often no quarter given for Confederates. That's, that's the level we're working with. Uh, eight Ypsilanti men, participated in the charge on Fort Wagner. Two, uh, Charles Augustus and John Leatherman would die. Five others would be wounded. So nearly every Ypsilanti man who assaulted Fort Wagner was either killed or wounded. And this is just the beginning of the 54th Massachusetts activity. This is just in the first months of its activity. It will fight another two years in this war. So here's the Ypsilanti men join the 54th and 55th Massachusetts, and I just want to say their name. Charles Augustus was 30. He was killed. Actually, we, we now have confirmation he was killed before Wagner. Uh, I thought for a long time he was just missing, and how horrible uh, to not know ever what happened to your uh, father, your husband, your son. Uh, but we found recently, just in the last week, I found confirmation in the, the pension file of his daughter that, in fact, his body was seen twice in front of Fort Wagner by other Black troops. Solomon Day, who was uh, from down near Pittsfield and, um, and Carpenter, or, or, or uh, uh, Packard, uh, Packard and uh, uh, Ellsworth area, Packard and Michigan Avenue area. Uh, Napoleon Hamilton, also a farmer. John Leatherman. Uh, was wounded at Wagner, and he was one of those to die at Andersonville. Daniel Ross was also from Ypsilanti. He would be wounded at another battle called uh, Honey Hill. Elias Rouse, 22, laborer, 
was wounded and there's his grave here in Ypsilanti. So we have one of these heroes buried right here at Highland Cemetery. Charles Scott, 24, laborer. He was wounded at Wagner. He's actually killed in one of the final battles of the war. We'll look at that later. John Byrd is a barber. Uh, he dies of disease on Foley Island in South Carolina. He's in the 55th. William Casey is the founder of Ypsilanti's Second Baptist Church. Look how old he is when he joins the 55th. He's 40 years old, and in fact, he's actually 48 when he joins. 40 was the cutoff date, so that's the name he gave. He was too old but um, to join, but he was adamant, so they made him a nurse. So he was a nurse for fellow soldiers all during the Civil War. And when his company, Company D, signed a petition to President Lincoln refusing any pay until there was equal pay with white soldiers. His was the last name on the petition. And I think it was the last name on, and it was written like John Hancock's in a huge, huge handwriting. And I think it's because he was the oldest man in the unit. I think that he had a, a position of reverence because of that. And he was dogged in his determination <coughs> to follow the Union Army and to follow the 55th Massachusetts. And again, this is the man who founded Ypsilanti Second Baptist Church. He even the man who gave his entire uh, life savings over to buy the property on the corner of Catherine and Hamilton. It's one of the last things he did before he died. So where the church is today, thanks a lot to this man who also escaped from slavery. He's a man who escaped from slavery. You can read his obituary and he talks about he hated slavery because he was denied to read and write. And that's, he hated it because of that. And it says he hated it with a deathless death. I don't know what that means, but it sounds like he really hated it. James W. Wood was a stableman. Nelson H. Wilson was a laborer. All of them joined the 55th. And basically the 55th is formed because so many men go across the country to join the 54th that there's too many. So they have to join, they have to have another unit. 